Okay guys, so I guess in my haste uh, to get the first initial review out, I forgot about the camera settings that are accessible through the FPV feed. Um, it's not the same as the Wi-Fi app. I think the Wi-Fi app will have more settings, but I'll show you that uh, here. And before I do that, I just wanted to update you on the way I've remounted my camera. So what I did is I, I flipped the mount from the bottom and I uh, zip tied it to this face on the top plate here. Put a little bit of foam there for vibration dampening. And I had to move the camera way forward to get the top of the standoffs out of the picture and only used one screw. So it's not ideal and the camera is exposed here. If you happen to hit something perfectly on that spot, you probably will break the camera. I think that a better mounting solution will be needed for these type of frames. We have standoffs here in the middle because uh, in, in FPV cameras, these don't aren't usually an issue because the field of view isn't as wide. But on the HD recording, it's so wide, these standoffs are, big, are kind of a problem. So I was able to get the top of these standoffs out of the picture by mounting it like this. Um, but the props are still in the view on the very, very edge of the bottom part of the picture. I probably could maybe fiddle around with this some more and move the camera up some more and into this kind of this space here, but uh, this mount, uh, I couldn't really figure out how to do it with this mount and not get the standoffs in the way. So I either would get these standoffs out in the picture, but then the, or get the props out of the picture, then these standoffs would be in the picture, or vice versa. So I think this is the best that I can come with. So um, this is what I, what I did for the mounting. Um, yeah, so I probably will try this in a different frame with maybe not this type of setup here and uh, hopefully not get props or frame in the picture. So the uh, part I forgot about was that there's these two buttons here on the side. There's a Wi-Fi mode switch button and a power shut shutter button here. And you use these buttons to access the menu. And right now it's actually the uh, camera is pr uh, powered off. This is the video transmitter transmitting the on-screen display. This is just the uh, beta flight on-screen display. And uh, these are the two buttons. You got a, this is the Wi-Fi button and this is the power button. And this is how you would um, get into the settings. I'm going to turn the camera back on. So I was playing around with it just now. And you just uh, hold the button here. And then the camera will come on. And down here, under basic camera operation, you would switch your modes by long pressing the Wi-Fi button. When it's in video mode, the LED is, there's a blue LED, and in photo mode, there's a green LED, and in OSD setup mode, there's an orange LED. And so we're gonna go to the um, OSD setup mode to get to the uh, settings. So we'll go ahead and stop the recording. And we'll switch our modes. Now we're in photo mode. And uh, we have a green LED now. Switch our mode again. Now we're in the OSD setup mode. And the orange LED is lit. And you'd uh, go through these menus by um, clicking the power button or the Wi-Fi button to select. So I'm going to hit the Wi-Fi button and then if you want to go into that menu, hit the Wi-Fi button again. And then if you want to go through these menus, you just, basically the Wi-Fi button is a select button. And we're gonna, we're gonna keep the standard 1080p 60 frames per second. And then to get out of this menu, you long press the Wi-Fi button. I'm gonna go to the next menu, so I'm gonna press the power button to go to the next setting. That's loop recording. And I'm gonna leave that to off. And go to the next one, there's auto recording. That's currently turned on, so that's when the power on the quad it starts recording automatically. And we'll leave that and get out of this. And the next setting is the Y dynamic range. And that's the default is on, we're gonna leave that on. And Long press the Wi-Fi button to get out of this menu. And we'll go to image. And you have exposure settings. Image flip. Metering mode. 
I think these are all the same settings that are in the uh, Run Cam 2 and Run Cam 3 field of view. So here you could change, you could adjust your field of view on the HD recording if you feel that uh, you want to go to uh, medium or narrow. Uh, in case you have that problem where I have where the standoffs are in the way, I could probably do that. I'm going to leave it at wide. And we'll get out of this. And there's TV out. Micro SD card. I think that's for formatting. It's uh, card information I got. It tells you how much uh, the size of your card and how much you got free. And then there's general settings, USB function, PC connection or remote control, feedback beep, auto power up, and power saving mode. Let's see what that is. So yeah, it's currently turned off. I think if, uh, if it's idle for too long, then it'll automatically shut off. And that's all the settings that we have available to us here. I think that there's going to be more settings available on the Wi-Fi app, so hopefully that'll get working pretty soon. Okay, so Runcam was very uh, quick to respond, and they sent me a link for the beta app, or the beta version of the Runcam app. So I, uh, I downloaded that, I put a link in the description for that. It offers you the Runcam split to connect to. Uh, I believe they said that the um, Apple version is already in the iTunes store. And so you guys are that running uh, iPhone shouldn't have any issues. And we'll go ahead and connect to the camera and take a look at the settings. And yes, yeah, looks just like uh, the Runcam 3. Let's see if there's anything different here. We got uh, auto white balance. And so you got, let's see here, sunny, cloudy, fluorescent light, and incandescent light. I usually just leave that on auto. And I think here we got exposure. And I'll leave that alone. I can adjust the exposure there. There's field of view. So I guess we can go to a medium field of view, it zooms it in a little bit. And that's narrow and it zooms it in a little bit more. And we're back to wide. And yeah, now the app you can see where the um, props are, are coming in over here. You can see that right there. And right over there. So if I go to a narrow field of view, still see the props a little bit right there. Just a tiny bit. But the props don't bother me so much, so I'm just going to leave it on wide. This is metering mode. I usually don't mess with that. Flip screen if you want to flip it upside down, if you have a different camera mounting. And over here you have your different frame rates. So we have uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second at 30 megabits. You can also decrease the bit rate if you want, but I'm not sure why you would want to do that. So this is all the same as um, on the Runcam 3. So you have also 1080p, 30 frames per second at 20 megabits. You can also change the resolution to 720p and 60 frames per second at only 20 megabits for 720p. So I'm just going to leave it at 30 megabits. And I think this button's here for slow motion. I never use that, so I'm going to turn that back off. And then down here you got different modes. You got your, so you got your burst mode for rapid pictures. So I guess I could press that, take a few quick pictures. So I'll take three. And I guess you can do five or ten. Let's see here. I guess we'll just try, what happens when we do ten? I'll move this around. Three, four, five. 
maybe uh, it'll capture some of this. I don't know. I'll go check it later. Change that back. You know, time lapse photos here. So yeah, it's all the same features as the Run Cam 3. You can do. Um, This is just standard uh, photo mode, and you can have a timer on. You can do time lapse video. So you take a uh, take a frame every one second, three seconds, five seconds, ten seconds. I'm not exactly sure how applicable this is for something flying on a mini quad. But as a standalone camera, it could be used that way. And I think we can access our gallery here. And so you look at what's saved on the SD card through your phone. Let's see here. Let's see if they'll play. Yep, it does play back on your phone. And I think you can use this button here to download it to your phone as well. And it tells you what the file size is. So you could download files from your camera via Wi-Fi. Over here are the settings and again, it looks all the same as on the Runcam 3. So I'm going to leave all this as default. I think they only recommend turning wide dynamic range off if you're in extremely sunny conditions. So like no clouds, uh, middle of the day, probably in, the, in, those, uh, con in those conditions, wide dynamic range isn't all that useful. It's more useful for like low light situations or where you're going to have extreme contrast situations like uh, uh, late, late afternoon or if you have clouds in the sky where you have uh, changing lighting conditions. That's where why dynamic range is pretty useful. So some of these settings are in the OSD, but then uh, some of these were not. But uh, this looks like all the same features in the Runcam 3. Okay, so as requested, this is the latency test that everyone was looking for. I personally don't feel that this method of latency testing is all that accurate, and there's a Joshua Bardwell video that explains why that is. It's highly technical and, and very long, so I'm not going to explain it here. But because this was uh, requested so off so much, I went ahead and did it. Uh, it was very hard to find frames where the image in the FPV screen wasn't blurry. So that's why um, it's, uh, this is not a very, I don't think it's a very good test. So I'm filming this at 120 frames per second and I slowed the video down to 25%. And I tried to find uh, frames where the, uh, at least the numbers on both screens were not blurry. And so I did five samples here. And I think there was one aberration, 17 milliseconds, and I think all the other ones were in the mid 30s. So I'm um, not sure if that's 100% accurate, but it's, I think that's also the number that Runcam was also advertising on their uh, product page, so can uh, take it for what it is. So here's another demo flight, uh, different lighting conditions here later in the day and also uh, cloudy, so a uh, really good test of the wide dynamic range. And I've always found that the image on the GoPro in, in this light condition specifically was not that great. The ground tend to be uh, very dark compared to the run cam image. Now, I know that there's a lot of uh, ar people out there arguing that the GoPro image is superior. And I tend to agree with that overall, that the GoPro image is better. And also, for especially for people that do uh, video production, uh, professionally, the, the quality is better on the GoPro. But for most people that don't do video editing and are just uh, 
you know, flying their mini quads around for fun, uh, this is a pretty pretty good solution. It's only $70 compared to the $300 for the uh, Session 5. So, you know, it, it, I'm not telling people to buy this or buy that. I'm just saying that it is what it is, and you guys can make your own decisions as to what you think is uh, of good value or not, and you can judge for yourself whether or not this image quality is good enough for you. So I'll put um, the raw file, I guess, for this flight in a link on my Dropbox, and so if you want to download the non-YouTube compressed version, uh, I will put that link in the description as well so you guys can check that out.